name is Duncan Cook, and for my entry into the Campus Movie Fest film contest, I've decided that in honor of National Feral Cat Day coming up on October 16th, that I would make a little video telling people about feral cats, and maybe even have a little fun with it. So first of all, what's a feral cat, you may ask? Well, everybody knows what a domestic cat is, your pet cat. These are cats that live around your house. You feed them, you water them, and you get to snuggle them and play with them, and they're very affectionate and probably like you. Then we have stray cats, which are unfortunate cats that at one time somebody cared for and loved, but probably were abandoned or got lost. In any case, stray cats uh, eat out of the trash, people will feed them, and they generally can be handled by people every now and then if you know you're a cat person you can take a shine to them. Then we have feral cats. Feral cats are completely wild. They're like wild lions or something. Uh, they live within proximity of humans but they cannot be handled and they are not domesticated. So they're not adoptable. A lot of times what happens with feral cats is uh, people will think that they need to go to the pound or that they need to be relocated. This is bad. This creates what's known as the vacuum effect. And I'll go into that in a minute. But the most humane way to deal with them is trap, neuter, release. And in the three years that we've been here, we've gotten this huge feral cat colony under control by trap, neuter, release. What you do is you take a cat trap. It's one of these large metal traps and they're very humane. And they have a spring mechanism or a tension release. And you put the, so we usually use sardines, you put the sardines in the trap. And once the cat steps on the release mechanism, the trap closes and you have a safely trapped cat. And what we usually like to do afterwards is put a, a towel or a blanket over it so that they're in the dark and they calm down. Once you have the cat trapped, you bring it to the Humane Society or whatever resources you have, and the cat is spayed or neutered. No more breeding. They're also often microchipped. That way, when I take the cat, I'm vouching for that cat. So they have my information on file, so if someone does trap the cat and bring it to a shelter, they run the microchip and it says, well, Duncan Cook is taking care of this cat. This is where he lives. So they release it back to me instead of putting it in the shelter and putting it down. The cats also get vaccinations, rabies, and things like that. Once the cat is fixed and taken care of in that respect, we bring them home, open the trap, and let them out. And after that, after being fixed, a lot of those nuisance behaviors like yowling, spraying, and fighting um, are lessened, if not eliminated altogether. So the cats become a better neighbor. Over the time we've lived here, about three years, we've gotten to know a lot of these cats and we name them when we take them. And we name them based on their personality. And um, they're pretty interesting, so let's go ahead and introduce you to some of these guys. This is Archimedes. After Steve Jobs' death, he took a key role in developing the iPhone 5. And this is Buttercup. She's a special envoy to the Middle East to help negotiate peaceful relations between Israel and Palestine. Darknose here has extensively hiked the entire length of the Himalayan mountains. And here we have Heath. You won't recognize him, but he worked as a stuntman for all the Mission Impossible movies in place of Tom Cruise. And here we have Kristoff. He's been responsible for marketing Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth. Pookie and Lola are off-Broadway performers that are actually now being courted for the next judges on American Idol.